What's up you guys? So here we are back with some more content and as promised today we're going to be training legs. You guys know I had the Achilles rupture last year so it's been you know about 14-15 months uh, since I had the surgery. Getting back to training legs 100% with things like squats and heavy leg press definitely has been a task but we're starting to get back rolling and feeling really comfortable with those types of movements. So today we're going to train quads. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of hip work, um, some abductors, abductors, I do that, whether it's hamstring, glute day, or quad day. Doing that definitely does help with the bigger movements, especially, like I said, having an injury last year did kind of change up and alter the way that I walk. So right now I'm trying to get the basic functionality of my hips to work together uh, back to 100%. So like I said, it's been a task, but we are making progress. Um, and I am able to train heavy, so that's a good thing. But like I said, today is quads. We're gonna do some extensions, some lunges, a uh, little barbell squat. It's been a while since I did that. You know, you gotta get the ankle mobility back, just the overall feeling of being comfortable and having the mobility to squat. So we're gonna do some and add some leg press. We're just gonna kinda see how my body feels, but I think it's gonna be a great session. It is Sunday, September 3rd. We are here at Texas Iron Republic, per the usual. And um, I'm pretty excited about this workout. So I hope you guys follow along, try to work out. Hit the subscribe button below. Let me know what you guys think and let's get to work. All right, guys, I'm gonna start with a little bit of um, a few sets of walking lunges. This way, it kind of gets my legs up and going, get some knee flexion, hip flexion going. Uh, then we'll go right into extension. So this is just basic. I actually have a lot of my athletes that I work with online in their training plans and clients that I work with in person. Uh, I usually start them off with the walking lunges. A lot of them hate it, but you know it does do some good. So I'm gonna go ahead and practice what I preach and, and start with those first. And doing it with no weight, especially on a warm up, allows me to focus on pushing from my glute, my hips, and quads. Really a great way to warm up on leg day, whether it's quad day or glute hams. And of course, you can always do these at the end of the workout as well. But if they're at the end, you gotta add some weight. I'll we'll go one more. Like I said, usually there are a few of them. This is good enough to get the blood going, make you sweat a little bit. That's what. <laughs> it's really hot in here. One of the good things about over here at this gym, if this was hamstring day, uh, ham or quads, they have a couple of pieces that allow for isolation, which is huge for me because like I said, having an injury and walking majority on my left side, being at the right ankle was injured. It's been a big help, you know, training isolation before I get started with the big compound movements. But even if I didn't have the injury, I, I'm still a big fan of training isolation before the compound movements. My clients all know that. <laughs> this should start at 50 pounds. Get your knees warm. A couple 20 rep sets. Start off with Since the weight is light, damn, I don't even, why am I sweating so much? We're just starting, it's hot in here. It takes its heat, it ain't going anywhere yet. Oh, okay. And the thing about extensions, guys, obviously I see a lot of people training in the gym and I've been a personal trainer for quite some time. Um, of course you wanna go heavy on them, but you also wanna be able to control the weight. So when you're on the negative, the weight should not lift you up out of the seat. So here, 
there's a seat belt down there, but um, a lot of machines or leg extension machines won't have that. And it's not necessary if you are mindful of how much weight you can actually lift and properly contract it. So high repetitions, medium, heavy, heavy weight is always a go-to for me on extensions. I am also a fan of pumping a good amount of blood, pre-exhaust, I guess, if you will, before I get into the heavy movement. So sometimes it'll be six, seven, eight sets of leg extensions before I go on to a movement where I utilize a whole leg, which I feel like it helps. All right. So in this one, we went from 50 pounds to 80 pounds, and then we we'll jump to 100. This machine actually tops out at 150, which is a good amount of weight for this hammer strength ISO leg extension. But what I always do is, before I even lift the weight up, I'll contract my hips and the top of my quad, and then I stay in that position throughout the set. So sometimes you'll see people, they'll lift it up and they'll shift or move. You don't necessarily wanna do that. Once your knee is pointed straight up at the ceiling, you wanna keep it in that position. You don't want it to twist or turn. You don't wanna turn your angles in and out. It's a hinge joint, like I said before. So once the weight gets heavier, could you imagine 150 pounds trying to turn your angles in and lift up like that? That's just not gonna work. So you have to be mindful if you want to target a particular part of the quad, then just use your mind muscle connection. Start light, and then you can start to figure out how to contract certain areas. And the tempo doesn't have to be super fast or super slow, just constantly moving throughout, that's it. Blood flow. Whew. I'll jump from the 100 to 130. Get towards the top sets here. Switch up different things to make this more effective. Mess with the pump. You can kick up the intensity some instead of just jumping the weight up and then your rest time is shorter. So you're just right back in there and that keeps the blood flowing. So I usually try to run anywhere from 45 to a minute 15 in between sets on leg extension. Now, of course, if the load is heavier with a squat or leg press, you might have a little bit longer. Just depending, it's person to person and your level of muscle endurance and conditioning, basically. Whoosh. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Nice, that shit burns. Ooh, ouch. Jump to the top. Get anywhere from 10 to 15 reps. And then we're gonna go on to isolation leg press. We have a seated horizontal press here. So I'll shoot over to that. And then um, do a few sets on some hip work. And we'll go on to some squats. A few sets on barbell squats. And we have any kind of squat you can think of here. Belt squat, barbell, swing squat, pendulum, hack. Uh, yeah, you'll see once we get over there. It's quite a bit here, which makes this prime for leg training days as well as back days. And we have that video up if you guys haven't saw, seen it. Scroll down, click on it, check it out. We'll repeat that workout, not that exact workout, but a back training video uh, sometime here soon. All right. All right, let's go. 
guys that train legs know you know that feeling how that feels all right So every one of those sets started with 20, working my way down, 15, 12, just kind of go how your body feels. But like I said, always with leg extension, I'm a big fan of high reps with the heavy weight just to get the blood flowing. So now I'm gonna shoot over here to this horizontal leg extension. All right, so as you guys can see, we gonna hit this, but this is what I was telling you about the squat machines. So you have that one back there, this one, hack squat, hack squat, power squat, I believe, swing squat, pendulum squat, belt squat, barbell squat. So <laughs> if you come to Texas Iron Republic, you're gonna fucking squat. Now the purpose of me starting with this is it allows me to get my hips, hips open. Like I said, before I start putting a heavier load on them. So these are gonna be isolation as well. And I'll double back for the squat press. That's probably my favorite type of leg press. So there's an angle in the corner, but that squat press, my body really likes that one. So if they have that at the gym, I'm always gonna opt for that over the angled. But you guys know you have to make work what you have. Fortunately, here I have uh, everything. And so what I always do with this is I lift my leg up in a position that lines up with my hip. So the side of my foot is directly lined up with my hip. That allows me to hinge easier. Just my transmitter. And then it makes it easy to sit down into it. So now I'm automatically lined up, right? So side of my foot lines up with my knee, lines up with my hip. That allows me to engage a little bit of glute hams as well while still focusing on the quad. Same thing with the left. Line it up, hip, knee. Then come back, get a good stretch. Once you're at a stretch, you can kind of feel where the tension is going to be. So even this position is just as important as a positive movement. Usually I'll go back to back with this weight on the first two sets just to get comfortable with the movement before I increase the weight. And one of the great things about, like I said, doing isolation, so not only do I feel tension in the quad, but also in the adductor. So once you're trying to 
get the mobility going, opening up your hips for squats. This is a great way to do it with basically minimum effort in trying to get into a stretch. This machine will do the stretch for you. All you have to do is get in, lock in, go to work. You see where it's at, right by the squats, deadlifts, all the heavy shit. Right there, so when it's time to get heavy, you got a chair in case you're gonna fall over. Stretch, ain't gonna work. Hips are tight, got to get them loose. The important thing is not to let this weight bounce. And staying in complete control makes it pretty effective. Okay. We have no music in here, guys, so it's kind of strange. <laughs> I'm definitely about to put my headphones on as I get into these heavier movements. Got to have some sound, something to motivate you. It's always good to get in here and get the stretch in. I'll do slight holes, five, 10 seconds each side. The holes in the middle are just to contract it a little bit more. So I'll hold for about one, two seconds, especially on the lighter weight. Pretty cool the plates this is a plate loaded adductor so it's load the plates on the back of the stem that's the first time and only time i've ever seen this machine is at this gym first time i use it i pretty much loved it so i would prefer this over traditional adductor any day of the week <clears throat> with the legs being extended out you don't really have much room to get so-called cheat the movement. Ooh. Ooh. And the key to training Adductors, abductors are doing this movement is activating the muscle all the way through from start to the end. You get the most out of it that way versus just swinging, you know, if you're going to the inside, swinging forward or outside, swinging. If you control it, activate the muscle first, then squeeze, control it, activate the muscle first, push out, 
well, once we get to the gluteator, you'll see what I mean with that. But you'll really get a crazy pump, even with the lighter weight, right where you want it, if you're able to do that. That comes with keeping the weight in check. And not just going balls to the wall heavy. But there's a time for that as well. But the more you can control the heavy weight, the more benefits you're going to get out of it across the board. That's upper body, lower body, anything. But you guys know that already. If you've been following me for a little while, you know I'm big on controlling the weight. If you can't control it, don't lift it. Okay. There's some heavy weight that needs to be controlled. heavy five plates pretty heavy stretch stretch Two of these. Actually, we're gonna go right here to the gluteator. I'm not sure if you guys have one of these at your gym, uh, but if you don't, I would advise you to tell your gym owner to get one. Harder to get in it when your legs aren't small. set as always knock out 20 nothing heavy weights on here actually go on the side behind you tight quarters in here if I can tell you guys the amount of times I've been clipped by one of these stems on these machines, this shit hurts. So you gotta be a little careful uh, moving, maneuvering through here. Okay. Thing that makes this machine tough is one plate is relatively light. Going to two plates gets heavy pretty quick. Same thing with this, so what I do is, instead of just getting in and pushing down, I'll brace, activate my hips first, and then push out. 
right? So it makes it easy you, if you're here. So now I'm activated and then I work from there and never get out of that position. You just wanna work through the movement and keep it contracted. You have to have used this machine to know that feeling. It gets real intense real quick if you use it right. But again, uh, when you have big compound lifts for legs, leg press, squats, training your hips, it doesn't take very long. But it can make a huge difference once you go to do those movements because obviously you recruit your entire lower half if you're leg pressing or you're squatting. So this is just the piece that keeps it all together. So it's definitely important. I know a lot of people either skip out on it and don't train it at all, or they train it light because they aren't aware of the benefits. So just making an essential part of your leg training, I guarantee you it make a big difference. You see how big I am in this machine? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm making it work though. <sighs> all right, activate, hold it. That shit stings. Jeez, man. Here comes the fun part. I'm gonna go with some squats, guys. So. It has been quite a while since I've done barbell squat. Obviously, being injured, having the Achilles rupture, um, makes it pretty hard to do that given that your angle mobility is not the same. Um, but like I said, we're making some progress in that area and I'm starting to feel comfortable, like I'm able to do them properly. So let's kind of give it a shot. Like I said, it's been a while, so we're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> the older and more wise I've gotten, I've realized the importance of stretching. Ugh a decent amount when going into movements that have a lot of muscle recruitment, AKA squats, stiff leg deadlifts, deadlifts, RDLs, whatever you wanna call them. Um, getting that stretch and mobility on point definitely has helped a lot. Of course, you gotta stretch your pecs out a little bit, holding that weight behind your neck. like middle school all over again.
you guys play football, you know, 135 was a big deal in seventh grade. <laughs> Lost my foot. Definitely gonna take some getting used to again, for sure. Definitely different. Feels weird after not doing it for so long. Have to get used to it. We're going back to it. Old school training. This is what we started with. All right. Not bad, not bad. Feels foreign though. Like I said, it's been a long time for sure. So it's gonna take some time to get back comfortable with it, but it will get there. I am new to knee wraps, so I guess we're gonna see how these feel. All right, not bad. That felt good, pretty secure. The only thing about doing those other movements, definitely take some juice by the time you get to squats, but it's cool. Cause like I said, it's Still necessary work, but you guys know squats, deadlifts, those big movements, they take a lot of juice out of you. So sometimes I do them early in the workout, but like I said, I felt like it was important to definitely get the hip work in, isolation over there before I moved on to getting back into squats. Cause it's been, like I said, quite some time. And this barbell, you guys know, is different than using a safety bar, which we have here. Um, and I'll utilize that once I get 
back comfortable with the form and into some heavier weight. But for now, here, three, four plates, I can work with this. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Oh, bitch. A lot heavier than I remember. <laughs> Woo. It's all right, felt good to feel that weight. Squats take a lot, obviously. So, we're gonna knock out some presses. Um, as much as I hate transferring the weights or plates, like I said, we're gonna go with the squat press. Uh, just find the weights and bring them over. And I always do presses after squats, obviously. Um, squats are going to be a harder movement, but um, that series of squats felt really good. Like I said, especially being that I haven't been under a barbell in quite some time. So there's just progress, especially coming back from an injury. You got to work with what your body gives you. And you want to push it too far. And I don't use a belt. So I probably may start using a squat belt just to help until, like I said, I get that hip mobility and everything back 100%. And uh, really benefit from doing squats. It's definitely my favorite leg movement. Um, when I started bodybuilding, you know, 20 years ago, well, not bodybuilding, but lifting weights, there weren't like all these different type of squat machines. Uh, so barbell squat was pretty much what you did. And it was something I loved doing. It's what made leg day hard. So we got to get back to making leg day hard again for myself. Ugh. And like I said, with this squat press, it's a little different because it actually curves down. It allows you to utilize ham glutes as well as your quads, depending on foot placement. Feet a little bit higher, you're gonna recruit a little more ham glute. Feet a little lower, more knee flexion, more quad. Now I remember why I don't wear these damn shoes. They're not the most comfortable thing you could put on. But it matched the outfit, so thought it'd be a bright idea. Usually on presses, leg press, squat press, the weights I'll usually jump up in four plate increments, two on each side this way by the time if I'm starting with four plates by the time I get to the top set which is a fourth fifth set I'm somewhere around 
eight, 10 plates each side. And if you've done squats and some other work before, 10 plates is gonna be plenty heavy. I know you see guys stack a lot of plates on and their range of motion isn't as deep. Uh, and that may be just what they're aiming for. So don't quote me on that being a wrong technique. But for me, I like to have as much full range of motion as possible on presses. So I can recruit ham glutes as well as quads throughout the movement. Because if you can get more out of a movement, you know, why not? And so on here, there's three lines. So I generally, if I want more ham glutes, I'll put my feet towards the top. So then the tip of my toes are at the very tip. More quad, I'll kind of come towards the middle line or the second line. Make sure my hips are nice and open. And again, once I press and activate, <clears throat> I stay in that position right there. I don't shift and move around that way I keep all the tension right where I want it. And then from there, you just have to allow your knees and your hips to flex. And then it'll do the work. Definitely tougher towards the end, going heavier, but if you can keep it as heavy as possible throughout, you can get some good growth doing that. So like I said, it's the third set. We're going on eight plates per side. Go from there. Pardon me if I'm short-winded, but putting out a lot of energy right now. No one's here to rack, unrack my weights. It's heavy. <laughs> it's never that heavy when you're doing it in the middle. But man, at the end, when you're juiced out. So I'm gonna do it with one more top set. I consider this a top set because I only landed 10, 12 reps on that one. And I'm gonna drop a few plates down. And I'm gonna rep them out with a little bit of a closer stance. Try to target a little bit more sweep. Now I'll wrap this thing up. We've been here about an hour and a half, so. 
feeling it. It's time to eat. Set. I'll wrap this up. I'm the damn weights is not as much work as doing a damn set. Now I see why you guys have training partners. Help you out with that. How sick are you? It's funny. Enough to say, guys. I. My legs really do feel like fucking jello. So I'm gonna sit for a quick second. Oh. Whew. Oh man. That about wraps it up, guys. Um, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, you know, you get a chance to follow along. Uh, this whole journey coming back. Uh, trying to bring you guys this content. If you missed it, we knocked out walking lunges, isolation leg extensions, uh, isolation horizontal leg press, abductors, adductors, some squats, squat press. So a fair amount of volume, pretty heavy weight. It did feel good to be back squatting again because it's been, like I said, quite some time. I honestly can't remember the last time I barbell squat, but I definitely am feeling it. My CNS is pretty shocked right about now. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to recover from this workout, but um, it was all quiet based. Did a little bit of hip work. Like I said, next time we come in, bring your leg workout, we'll do more hamstring glute stuff, which is also a big favorite, favorite workout of mine uh, in the area where I need to improve at the whole posterior chain. So uh, look out for that. But I think we're gonna restart the whole circuit over again and uh, bring you guys a chest day coming up later this week. So like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow the workout, 
keep it heavy, keep the volume high, keep the intensity high. Hit the subscribe button, share the videos, comment, let me know what you guys want to see. And we'll catch you guys on the chest workout coming up here in a couple days. A shout out to my sponsor, Dark Sport. We'll drop the code below. You guys use Patrick10. Save yourself some money on the new drops. Uh, Inspire Nutra, code MORE. Save yourself some money on some top line supplements. And yeah, hope to catch you guys in the gym. And we'll see you next time.